as we bring you now the U.S. senatorial debate as the focus, as we mentioned earlier, of the U.S. politics is squarely right here on the state of Kansas. My name is Greg Akagi, farm broadcaster with WIBW Radio and the Kansas Radio Networks, and I'll be serving as the moderator for the U.S. senatorial debate. Before I introduce the candidates, I want to introduce the folks who will be asking the questions. Uh, the new media member panel is Liz Montano. She is with the Kansas Radio Networks in Topeka. And then we also have two people who are on the governor's panel, Michael Schwenke, reporter anchor with KWCH Television in Wichita, and Nick Sween, the managing editor of the Hayes Daily News. And our timekeeper, once again, is Todd Pittenger, news director with KSAL Radio in Salina. The rules, very similar to what we had in the governor's debate. Two candidates will have 90 seconds for an opening and closing statements. They will have one minute to respond to questions and the candidate who answers first also will have 30 seconds of rebuttal time. So, you're not here to listen to me, you're here to listen to the candidates. So, on to our candidates. First off, Greg Orman, the independent candidate. He is... Greg is an Olathe, Kansas businessman involved in several businesses, and he also co-founded the Common Sense Coalition in 2010. Mr. Orman, your opening statement. Good morning. My name is Greg Orman. I grew up in a single parent family. Uh, Jim is here. <laughs> Good morning. Come, I'll be over that. Evening. My name is Greg Orman. I grew up in a single parent. Shh. Come on, folks. Settle down. Good morning. My name is Greg Orman. I grew up in a single parent family with five brothers and sisters. I learned how to solve problems at a young age. Having to share a bathroom sort of guaranteed that. I watched my mom struggle every month to pay our bills and make ends meet. But with the help of dedicated teachers, great public schools, I was able to go to college and ultimately start my own business. And while I've lived the American dream, I realize all is not right with America. Our system of government is broken, and we all know it. We're sending the worst of both parties there, bitter partisans who care more about pleasing extremists than they do solving problems. And we have serious problems to solve as a nation, from health care and higher education affordability, to stagnant wages, to living within our means as a country. If we don't solve these problems, our status in the world, our standard of living, and the very existence of the middle class in America is at risk. I've tried both parties, and like lots of Kansans, I've been disappointed. That's why I'm running for the United States Senate as an independent. I realize it's sometimes difficult to know what to think about a nonpartisan candidate, my opponent would like you to believe I'm a liberal, masquerading as an independent. While some Democrats are starting to call me a conservative, I guess they can't even agree on that. What I am is a fiscally responsible businessman who will work hard to go to Washington and solve problems, not play party politics. Stop. I will be beholden only to you, not to party bosses Stop, and please. not to special interests. U.S. Republican Senator Pat Roberts is completing his third term in the United States Senate. He served in the House of Representatives from 1981 to 1997, serving as chairman of the House Agriculture Committee, and has also served as chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. He is the senior member of the Senate Agriculture Committee. Senator Roberts, your opening statement. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thanks to WIBW for sponsoring this election, uh, your event. It's a great day. Go Cats! This is a crucial election, both for Kansas and our nation. When Bob Dole endorsed me for re-election, he said, when the world is on fire and there is chaos and scandal here at home, we must have proven and experienced leadership to safeguard our national security and get our economy on a sound track. 
There is only one candidate here today who has that experienced leadership. I have a proven record. I have a proven record and as a senior member of the Senate Ag and Finance Committees, I look forward to what we can accomplish together under a new Republican majority. We must, we must, we must stop the Obama agenda. But before we can do that, we have to break Harry Reid's stranglehold on the Senate. The House has passed, the House has passed over 350 bills, all of which are stuck in the Senate, where now good legislation goes to die. The choice is clear. I am the only candidate on this stage that will vote to put Harry Reid out to pasture and break the gridlock. Now my opponent, my opponent wants you to believe he's an independent, he is not. He is a liberal Democrat by philosophy. He has given thousands of dollars to Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and, and listen to this, listen to this, Harry Reid. Now, Kansans know better. They won't Time. be fooled by opportunism or misleading Time. campaign rhetoric. My first vote will be for a Republican majority in the U.S. Senate. That is the vote for Kansas, please. and you can count on it. All right, before we get to our questions, by the way, and I echo Kelly's thoughts, I love the enthusiasm that we have seen here so far this morning. But a reminder, please be courteous in responding to each of the candidates, and please refrain from responding until they've completed their statements. The moderator, yours truly, has the authority to add time to a candidate if they feel like their response has been interrupted by audience members. You didn't come to hear me, you came to hear the candidates and we'd like for that to happen and for those who are undecided in their vote on November 4th. All right, let's get to the questions. And the first question will come from Liz Montano with the Kansas Radio Networks in Topeka and this will go to Senator Roberts. Thank you very much. And actually my question is for either of you to answer, but Senator, the EPA, the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers have a proposal to dramatically expand their jurisdiction of waters under the Clean Water Act, a plan that's come under sharp criticism from states, municipalities, agriculture, and business. Critics claim the waters in question are already regulated at the state level, and the plan is nothing more than a government overreach. Do you support the proposal? Why or why not? I do not support the proposal of the government taking over the U.S. water. On the last day, on the last day of the Congress, we met with Secretary Gina McCarthy, nine senators, and said to her how much damage this is going to do to farmers and ranchers. This proposal started out as two pages. Then there's 88 pages in the Federal Register, 363 pages if you want to read it. And yet we're supposed to be exempting farmers and ranchers. Folks, what we're talking about is farm ponds. Farm ponds are supposed to be clean enough so that all the farmers here at 5 o'clock can go swim in a farm pond. That's ridiculous. That's a farm pond that uh, no self-respecting duck would ever land on. I told Gina McCarthy and I showed her those, uh, all those pages of paper. No farmer, no farm organization, nobody could figure that out. And we urged her to back off. Let the state, let the state control this. Pre our governor has a 50-year water plan. Let's work on that. Let's keep the federal government out. I'll tell you what she said. She said, we might back off. We might back off. I think Time. she will back off. I think she will back off Time. until the election. Then look out. Mr. Orman, you have one minute. Uh, I agree with Senator Roberts. Farm ponds shouldn't be regulated by the EPA. Uh, in fact, as a businessman, I have to face uh, regulations every day. Uh, my father, who's owned a furniture store uh, in Stanley, Kansas, for 41 years, refers to this as the beehive of regulation. Uh, we end up facing regulatory burdens from the state, local, and federal uh, agencies, and I agree that those burdens uh, are inappropriate uh, and, and bad for business. Uh, what I will say is I think the senator uh, could demonstrate more leadership here 
and could actually propose changes to the rules that make it explicitly clear that the EPA is not regulating farm ponds. And I think that's what he should have one of his staffers do uh, so that, that, that there can be clarity uh, for farmers in the state of Kansas. Senator Roberts, 30 seconds rebuttal time. Well, Greg, I've already done that. We already have a bill, and it's a bipartisan bill, and it asked the Secretary of EPA, Gina McCarthy, the very person that we were visiting with, back off. And as I said before, before all the crowd was shouting, I think she will, until the election, and that's the way it is. But my opponent has a record, a record of voting for Barack Obama, running against me as a Democrat, and donating to Harry Reid. If we didn't have Harry Reid in the Senate, we could we could consider that bill by Senator Barrasso and we would take care of it. The next question comes from Michael Swanky with KWCH TV in Wichita, and it will go to Mr. Ornan. Okay, this is for both, and I think we have to address address it because it's been a little crazy here in the last few days. We were supposed to have three podiums up here on the stage. In the last few days, we've received news that the Democrat in this race has decided to take himself out of the race, so that his name will remain on the ballot. Mr. Orman, you have said that this news was unexpected. Senator Roberts, you've said this was a corrupt bargain between Orman and National Democrats. How does this change the race? I, you know, if that question is addressed to me, what I will say is, and, and, and repeat what we said in our statement, it was unexpected by us. Now, I've been asked by a lot of people, did you have anything to do with it? And all I can say is, I think our progress in the polls was obviously something he had to take into consideration. I, I, I think the fact that our message is resonating with Kansans, that Kansans really do believe Washington is broken. They really do believe we're sending the worst of both parties, not just Republicans, not just Democrats, but both parties to Washington. And that if we want to solve our problems as a nation, uh, we're going to have to get back into the serious business of problem solving instead of simply positioning to get reelected. And, and, and ultimately, that's what our campaign is about. That's the message that we brought to Kansans. That's what led over 11,000 Kansans to sign a petition uh, to get us on the ballot. Senator Roberts? Well, this is the first time I've ever seen National Democrats really work very hard to get a Democrat off the ballot. And I, I've, worked, I've worked with Claire McCaskill across the aisle in a bipartisan manner, but I've got to tell you, when Claire McCaskill calls the Democrat candidate and urges him to get off the ballot, you know something fishy is going on. And I have a message for Claire McCaskill. Uh, we have, we've had a lot of people from Missouri come across the border. Just think of Quattro, stay in Missouri. Don't try to turn around and turn into politics. Again, my opponent has a record of voting for Barack Obama, running against me as a Democrat and donating to Harry Reid. If you want to make change in Washington, get rid of Harry Reid. Put him out to pasture. I'm the only candidate that can do that. Mr. Orman, 30 seconds rebuttal. Well, this, this does sort of create a really unique situation. I think it's the first time that I've heard a Republican complain about disenfranchising Democratic voters. <laughs> I want to go to Washington to get rid of all partisanship and to focus on problem solving, and that's all this is about. All right, the next question comes from Nick Sween with the Hayes Daily News, and this question will be to uh, Senator Roberts. Does semi-permanent residency matter for a senator or congressman? What are the pros and cons of returning to the district to live and work when Congress is not in session versus maintaining one's residence in the Washington area? I know 
more about Kansas than anybody else on this day. I have walked with families in the rubbles of Greensburg. I have stood with farmers in the fields of dust during the recent drought. I have been fields underwater where Missouri River flooded. I have been corner to corner and border to border. I have been in all 105 counties many times. I have been on more main streets than any other public official. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Bob Dole just called me and he said he's out here trying to catch up. I am a fourth generation Kansan. I was born here, educated here, done my life's work here. Don't tell me I'm not from Kansas. The people of Kansas elected me to go to the U.S. Senate. The U.S. Senate is in Washington. My home is Dodge City and I'm damn proud of it. Mr. Orman. Well, I, I suspect, Senator, I've been to Dodge City more this year than you have. Um, How many times? And, and I've, I've been there four times. Five? This year. I've been there four. Well, I've been about seven, so you're wrong on that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'll, I'll look for the camera roll on that. Um, uh, and I probably lived more of my adult years in Kansas than you have. But what I will say, to be perfectly candid, is I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters uh, where someone lives. I think it matters how they vote. And when it comes to voting for Kansas and standing up for Kansas values, uh, Senator Roberts has taken a sharp turn to the right. He voted against the Farm Bill. Uh, he voted against veterans' benefits. He voted against funding for NBATH. And, and ultimately, the, maybe the most egregious thing is when the VA reform bill came up, uh, he didn't even bother to vote on it. And I think that's a, an affront to all Kansas veterans. Senator Roberts, 30 seconds rebuttal. Well, I've worked.